Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle Tennant Nicholson. I'm an international publicist, the co founder of Wasabi Publicity, the co writer of 21 Day PR Action Guide, and also the co founder of pitchrate.com, a media networking um, a website where you can actually, actually meet journalists and sources. What you've found yourself here today in a call with the October 2020 21 Day PR Action Guide Challenge. And if you haven't downloaded um, this workbook, you can get it for free right now during the pandemic at pitchrate.com. And these are the Friday calls to actually support you in actually doing your PR challenges every month. And it, I'm hoping that you change it up every month because the news cycle is always changing. We always have different breaking and seasonal news. Here at Wasabi, we always change our campaigns, at least the angles and the hooks, to mirror what's happening in the news cycle. And I hope that you do too. And this is your guide through that. In the pandemic, we've been offering this service for free because quite frankly, everybody's pivoting because times are very uncertain. And this is one of our giveaways to make sure that the public is served. Um, we always believe that we um, get what we give. And so we give, give, give very freely. So if you found yourself on a recording, welcome. If you're here with me live, welcome. So let's jump right in. What we're gonna do is I usually do like a short lecture or some type of um, lesson. Then we break into groups and so that you can actually make it very real for yourself. And when we did a poll in the past, in the early months of the pandemic, by far the uh, breakout sessions were the most favorite. And if you have uh, questions, I want you to put them in the chat. And I want you to all practice pitching every single part of the call. So right now in the chat, pitch yourself. This is one of those safe places where nobody's going to say, oh my God, you know, they're plugging themselves. Of course you're plugging yourself. That's the whole point, right? So we can only sell ourselves if people know about us. And in fact, many times it's not who you know, it's who knows about you. And that's what we're really uh, learning here. So um, let's go ahead and I want to just do something different. And I want to start with questions. As Drew always says, my, uh, he's the, uh, my business partner, we always tease him because he starts most meetings with, what questions do you have? Right, Hannah? So, <laughs> so before I get into my uh, lessons for the day, which are mirrored in the blog, if you're like, what blog? Just go to wasabipublicity.com and under the blog is where I'll blog um, one to three times a week about what's happening in this session. And so you can actually find registration links, past uh, calls, past blog entries and so forth. Hannah, just put that in the chat. And then also if you've missed past calls, you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, which is also the links are at that blog. An easy way to remember my blog is storytellertothemedia.com. But right now, let's go ahead and uh, let me answer some questions about what you've actually been dealing with with the workbook. So who would like to go first? A refresher on the different pitch types based on the type of media you are approaching. Perfect, you got that, Charlie. Um, okay, and then we've got some pitching started. Good, Marjorie's getting us started. Um, oh, good, and Linda just received copies of her memoir. Congratulations, Linda, that's very exciting. Here, Linda, why don't you, uh, let's unmute Linda. Linda, can you unmute yourself and then, um, Show us a show us a copy of it. Okay. Oh yeah, she's gotta go get it. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Yay! Woo! That's very exciting when your book comes in the mail, isn't it? Very exciting. Yeah. So one of the things that um, did you just mute her again, Hannah? Uh, if I did, I didn't mean to. Linda, will you unmute yourself again? There we go. Okay. What would you like to say about your celebration? <laughs> I, I, it's so scary to think about how to market it. I mean, I've been working on marketing for a long time, but um, you know, now that it's real and I have all these books to sell, <laughs> it's scary. 
Well, you're in the right place, okay? So where's my Rosalind? Hey, Rosalind. So Hi. Rosalind, um, will you, there's gonna be people who are participating or listening to the recording who didn't hear you last week, right? And so uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, holiday that you started many years ago that would actually apply to Linda's book. Yes, in Chase's calendar of events, I submitted an entry and I created International Child-Centered Divorce Month in January, which is the month that gets the most divorce filings after the holiday season. And that's commemorated all month long with a special website and um, experts around the world contributing online and digital products that they give away for free on divorce and co-parenting issues. And Rosalind is uh, going to be my guest blogger next week. Right. Oh, good. You guys did a blog share. We talked about that last week about sharing blog posts and getting links. And that's wonderful. Now, this is a perfect example of what we're talking about with uh, PR. And there's two things here, right? One, you can actually create a holiday. You could create your own seasonal news. If you don't want to tie into what's actually happening, you can create your own. So Linda, what is one action you can take toward January in October um, to promote your book? Let's just, from what you've learned from uh, us or that you know, what's one action you're gonna take so I can kind of coach you on that? Well, my big question right now, I was uh, been working on uh, sending out a letter to possible launch team members. And, uh, but my, my big question, I've run into this roadblock that says, no, I can't uh, offer books, my books, and hope that uh, people will then review them on Amazon, that that's a no-no. So I'm stuck. Gotcha. And define launch team. When you say launch team, what do you mean? I mean people who will uh, read my book, review it uh, on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and um, talk about it on their social media and tell their friends and maybe even their um, library, local libraries and bookstores. So Linda, do you, do you care that I'm actually drilling down with you? May I coach you publicly in front of everybody or is that, is that okay with you? I would love that. Okay, thank you. So you guys, I'm gonna go a little deep with Linda, okay? This is excellent. And Linda, do I have the permission to tell you uh, that your baby is ugly or do you want me to tell you that your baby is adorable even though uh, that's not the truth? <laughs> I'm not worried. About, I, I honestly am not worried about your opinion on my cover because I've had a lot of no, positive- No, I'm not talking about your book cover. Oh, my baby? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can tell me whatever you think. Yeah, it's just a, like a it's really like is a it's just a thing that people say in advertising, right? They say ah, uh, it is more of an advertising slick comment than a publicist comment, but it really like you know you want to be dealing with people who tell you that your baby's ugly rather than oh my god you're like literally your three year old is the most cute thing I've ever seen. And then they turn around and behind your back, they say, oh my God, what an ugly child, right? So I'm not talking about your book cover. I, it is oh. so funny too, like every author I've ever met has a thing about their book cover. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I have one friend who, um, she, it was her book on yoga and paddling and they put another woman on the cover, the publisher. That I was like, I, I was like, let me add them, let me add them. And she's like, no, this, this ship has sailed and they're doing that. And I was just like, gosh, that is so irritating. But anyway, um, the, what I wanted to tell you is uh, your launch team and your strategy with your launch team. That's the baby I'm talking about. Is it okay oh. to tell you what I said? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, because I have a little bit, uh, it's a little... Um, I just want you to have open ears and know that this is coming from my heart, okay? So when we're actually talking to people that we consider launch team members, we want to have our focus on them, not us. So right. naturally, you have a concern about your book and you want them to read your book, review your book, talk, you know, and, and then the hesitation that you feel, I assert, is because your focus is on you and not them. Okay, so let's okay. really talk about what's up for them. So okay. we're, 
one of the things that we're doing in today's call is pitching yourself in three sentences or less. That was always at this stage in the 21 day PR challenge is how to pitch yourself quickly. Okay. Asking somebody to read a book, it might take them eight to 10 hours at best. I know it's a big. much bigger commitment than saying, can you review my book? Right. Or can you provide me a testimony to put on the book cover? Do you know, see the difference? Okay. Right. Okay. So that's an easier request, right? Even better. If you go to celebrities or influencers, they may not even, they can actually help you promote your book without reading your book. Yeah. It's finding those people. <laughs> yeah. I had a client angry yesterday because the, um, it was a, it was a mainstream um, TV anchor in a national show who hadn't read her book and was interviewing her. I said, well, first of all, you know, the press sometimes are under acknowledged. They're sometimes overworked, underpaid, and they don't have the time actually to read your book all the time. Right. They might skim it, you know, if they right. read their, if they take the time to read your book, they're going to tell you. So my recommendation is you, cut them some slack and make it a really easy request. Great. Okay. So I've seen other authors, um, if they're not, if they're like a friend or a family or an associate, might maybe just ask them to buy the Kindle version because it's cheaper. Right. It doesn't really matter if they read it or not. They can still give you a testimonial on Amazon, by the way. Okay, so, but I can't give them a free, I can't give them a free uh, Kindle version. They, okay, they have to pay. Have them purchase it. Okay. Okay, these are family, friends, and associates. Okay. Okay, family, friends, and associates, please buy me, do me a favor, do me a solid, because they're the ones who have Linda's interest at heart with you. Right. They're going to do it because they love you. I've done that for, uh, you know, I have other people in my network where they're just like, Hey, do me a solid. And I'm going to then do something for you. And at the time she wrote me, I was like, I had no interest in her book. I'm not going to say who it is <laughs> just in case she ever sees this, but she's like, look, I'm going to, um, you do this for me. And then you have a favor for me whenever you want to call upon that favor. And I already had something I wanted from her. So I did that. I put her and I put, you know, click to my link, my review of her, her book. And I said, can I call upon your favor now? And she's like, of course. Right. Cause that's what friends, families and associates do for each other. Right. Okay. So you should probably figure out from your social media accounts, 50 people who can do that at the minimum 25. Okay. Family, friends and associates. Right. So Maybe of that 25 to 50 people you ask, you get 10 reviews. Great. Okay. Now let's talk about the press and influencers. For other people like Rosalind, you do your guest blog shares. And what's in it for Rosalind is the, she gets to talk about her um, January holiday, right? So that, but you're focused on her holiday more than you are her book. Okay. Same with a celebrity. Let's say you have a per current celebrity going through divorce um, by the name of the title of your book. There's a spiritual bent to it. Right. Yeah. Let's say they're a celebrity who's openly religious or openly spiritual and they've, they've logged about or talked about it. Contact their agent, manager, or publicist and see if they won't give you uh, a sentence you know, like to say and say you'll write it for them. Maybe they'll give you a Maybe they'll give you a photograph of themselves that in just a quick line, and you can even suggest like three sentences and just say, I really, I saw what you posted. I just wrote this book. I'm doing my PR push right now. Could I get a, a couple of sentences from you on the importance of God and divorce? They don't have to read your book. You just know what they're committed to because they posted something on Instagram. Right. And say, I've taken the liberty to make it easy for you Here's three possible solutions on what you might say. Feel free to edit. And by the way, there's a holiday coming up in January that I'm participating in, and I'd love to use your testimonial then. That is like 
a pitch with under three sentences for a celebrity to endorse your book. And they do not have to go on Amazon to do that. Even better, you could say like in parentheses, even better if you do it on Amazon, ah. that you'll have to buy Kindle. This way right. I'll give it to you for free or what, or just here's your complimentary link or something, right? But you, if you get a, a quote from a celebrity or an influencer, you want that, you want that for a future printing of your book or for you to actually put on your website or something like that. Now, right. press, on the other hand, all they want is a bylined article. So then the pitch becomes, um, hey, I noticed that you covered divorce. I also noticed that you covered spirituality. Funny thing is, I just launched a book on these topics. I would love to write a 800 word bylined article for your magazine. Um, here's a sampling of uh, my contents, my table of contents choose any of these chapters and you can either have an excerpt or I'll write you a fresh article. That's your pitch for press. You see the differences? So one right. family friend associates, it's the focus is Linda. Then the influencer celebrity focuses them and on something that they're doing, they're post their interest. Same with press. They don't really care about the book. They just want content for their venue. Okay, questions, Linda? No, my head is just spinning, that's all. <laughs> Good, we're gonna break into sessions. So Charlie, if you noticed, um, that was different types of pitches for different types of targets, but when we come back from the break, we're also gonna talk about the differences in the press vertical. So there's also differences between magazines like print and broadcast. But right now, when we break up into the group, I want you all to practice doing your pitch in three sentences or less. And you're either pitching family and friends, you're pitching your celebrities or influencers, or you're pitching press. Okay, and then right now just choose the press of your, um, of your choice. We'll be back in uh, five minutes. So we have, of course, you know, in this group, and they're always varying sizes. Uh, let's not, you know, it's, it's, it's all good, whatever happens. But we have um, journalists in this group, uh, expert sources, authors, and other publicists. I'm like, always love it when another publicist shows up. So Katie, I'm gonna put you on the spot. So let's unmute Katie Bratlin. So Katie, um, first of all, Katie and I are kindred spirits, okay? And one of the things that I was telling her is that I recent, you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that people collapse the word publicity and publishing and it's just a thing that we do in our head right and so it's very different it's not the same and so sometimes I have to help people unravel that so that's kind of what Katie and I were talking about but uh, I get Katie and I had a chit chat and then Katie would you like to try your uh, pitch again to everybody absolutely okay um, we're on. So <laughs> All we can do is keep trying, right? Yeah, that's um, what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. If so you I'm Katie Bratland. All the better, then it gives us something to talk about. Go for yep. it. So I'm Katie Bratland, and I help uh, athletes and those who need to get publicity to make their stories. Let's go with shine for right now, but we're looking for a word that has something to do with. Um, with athletics and sports, and especially I work with soccer players. So, um, what were we saying? Roar. Yeah, so I was like, wouldn't it be fun to do something like, um, you know, how soccer players like the, immediately when I think of a soccer player, I think go like there's that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all like go. So yeah. you could play with the word goal because then, but I'm well. Look, my nature is to be dramatic. Katie, you seem not as dramatic as me. Okay, so like I, we also want to capture Katie's spirit, not Michelle's spirit, right? Yeah, so that's yeah. also very important as publicists is that we uh, that we speak for the client, not for ourselves. And yeah. also, it might freak out your clients. They may be like, "What? Yeah, leave that to us on the field," you know. But I like, you know, um, soccer stories soar. I like the alliteration of that. You know, oh, I make soccer stories soar. Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, well, I just make the masses pay attention to my soccer players. 
There we go. Yeah, I like that. Right. I'm, and then I'm, you know, then you're like, well, how do you do that? Like, do that with public relations strategies. Well, which kind? All of them. You right. know, from the very beginning. Because, because what Katie was talking, so publicists all do very different things, right? So I'm doing traditional PR where I like dial and smile and call the Wall Street Journal or Good Morning America. And that's very traditional PR. Other publicists, all they do is influencers. And that is not, that is a hybrid of, ad, that's owned and uh, earned hybrid, yeah. okay? Then there's uh, social media or technology, like, you know, just the websites or just uh, outreach with celebrity influencers. And so, or they just do podcast tours or blog tours. And uh, I told Katie that one time I was at a party and uh, it was actually not a, it was actually a reunion. And I went to the Youth Performing Arts High School in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentuckians, Derby peeps, anybody, anybody? No Derby fans? Come on, no Derby pie people? Everybody, if I were like Oprah, I'd be like, everybody gets a Derby pie. Everybody gets a Derby pie. You have to eat a Derby pie at once in your life. And so if you love like a pecan chocolate situation, I recommend that you order a, a Derby pie for yourself immediately, okay? So very sweet though, not if you're diabetic, okay? So um, one of the things that happened is I, okay, thanks Mitch. Thank, <laughs> thanks Mitch. Mitch is like, I love it. Um, there's, all, there's also lots of t uh, knockoffs online. And if you're gonna do the chocolate thing, use the Stevia chocolate chips. They're delicious. I think it's called Lily's. And then you can bring the sugar level down some. So there I am at a reunion of the Youth Performing Arts High School. And I'm actually teach, I'm actually talking to Elise, um, somebody who I'd gone to high school with. And I said, and we were just chatting at the reunion and I had known her, you know, since I was like 12. And I was like, what are you doing? And she looked at me, she was, I'm a media booker. And of course I knew exactly what that was. I said, I wanna hire you. Like there was no, like her pitch was so succinct. <laughs> I was like, I know exactly what that is and I'm gonna hire you. And she goes, well, I charge $75 an hour and I only work four hours a day and I'm booked right now. And I said, oh, so I can't hire you. She goes, not right now. And then I had to wait like three months and tell her, cause she was like one of those, she's like, um, you know, I work, I'm a mom and that's my priority and I'm only doing four hours a day. And, um, and I could never get into, I think I scheduled like one campaign with her you know, and plus 75 bucks an hour, like I, that's not very competitive anymore, right? At the time, I think that this was like, you know, probably 10, 15 years ago. Um, some publicists charge a lot, right, Katie? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hourly rate can get up there. But yeah. anyway, I remember that I was just always wanting more with Louise, right? She like specialized with chefs, like what her, what her specialty in particular was booking those cooking segments. And so she had like a few chefs that she booked and that's what kept her busy. And she worked out that that's all she was gonna work and that's what she did. But do you see the clarity in the succinct, like I'm at a class reunion. She was a dancer, I was in theater. Like there would be no, unless her pitch was so clean and clear, I wouldn't know that I could hire her immediately. You see, that's how clear you wanna be, right? Okay, so next thing, uh, I would like to hear some people share from what happened at the breakout session. It's also something that we don't always do, but I would like this time, we're mixing it up a little bit in this call. We're talking about how to pitch yourself in three sentences or less and the meat of your pitch, right? So what you're putting on the bones of these pitches. And, and by the way, if you're in the 21 day PR action guide, there's actually pages um, Hannah, do you have the pages or should I tell you what they are? Um, I don't have the book. Where's my book? Yes, I guess. <laughs> I don't. I might actually have your book. So okay. <laughs> like, oh. I might have taken it off your desk. Um, sorry about that. So, um, I think that the best thing about your meat, I just want to make sure that people have uh, page 87 is the best page. 
to just really direct you, especially for Mitch. Mitch likes to know where to go in the book. So yeah, page 87. And you'll see here, brevity is still key. So in uh, bullets are, people, journalists love bullets. So who would like to share from the breakout session uh, some ahas or some things so they can have some additional coaching? Maybe you just want to brag. Maybe you want coaching. Mitch. Okay, unmute, everybody, mute. Mitch, unmute yourself there, okay? Yeah, hi. So I visited with Charles in my breakout room and I went uh, forward with, uh, so you are uh, knuckled down for the pandemic and itching to travel. I've been doing this for quite a long time and I have a number of tips to help people start planning now for the travel they want and deserve when the pandemic is over. Yeah, I'm interested and, in that. And, and so and Charles- is, so give me a, are you interested everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. And, and so Charles was saying, uh, well, that's interesting because I had to cancel a couple of trips and I'm itching to travel. So it resonated with him and I thank him for his feedback. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do a little sidebar when we're done. Yes, so, network you guys, perfect, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, let's go back to Charlie. Like Charlie had that question too about the different people. So uh, Mitch, Let's pretend that you're making that pitch to, um, we're going to differentiate between print and broadcast. So people try right. to say like all different types of media. Let's simplify it and call it just print and just broadcast. And the difference okay. being is that print is going to be in written form somehow. Right. And they're going to be focusing on scoops. Like they need the scoop or the information. Whereas broadcast is more focused on entertainment and they don't want you to turn the channel, change the dial, click on something else. They want to keep you engaged. So they want entertainment, right? Okay. So, and uh, you have great tips, right? You were the one that had radio experience. That's why you have such an amazing voice. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, we should just let you do the rest of the call because I had food poisoning this week and I sound terrible. So, oh, okay. So, why don't so you I'll, talk I'll, send, I'll send you the script and you move your lips. <laughs> I want you to tell us, Mitch, how you would pitch print and broadcast. What you just did, I want you to alter it between okay. print, uh, print and broadcast. So maybe a magazine, a newspaper, a blog versus a podcast, a radio show, a TV show. So, so for, for print, I would say... My name is Mitch Creighton. I'm a travel expert, and there is a huge pent-up demand for travel once this pandemic is over. I can offer 15 tips to help people get ready for that uh, travel they want and deserve. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna up level it, okay? It's because we in a print situation, we want people to post it on a fridge, clip it, print it, do mm. something else, right? There's something I want to show you. Um, this is, you know, a Leo when they have like their, their little <laughs> book of memories right here. I want to show you something that I did when I was a children's uh, party entertainer. Does that mean you were a clown? I was a clown. Princess, hey. um, pirate, whatever the child's dream was, I would make their dreams come true and then we would do art. You see the birthday planning tips? Yeah. So this was one of those, this was an early childhood news. This was a national magazine and it was uh, the parent pullout. See, I think that you could do like some type of, you know, um, like what would figure out a way that people would have to then post it like a checklist or like a, um, your getaway guide that you want to like, I, there's, there's something that I, there's something in my garage that I refuse to throw away. It's really weird, actually. Um, when I had to drive three hours from my house here in Western North Carolina to go to the Ocoee River to do whitewater kayaking, I had a checklist of all the things I needed to take with me, and I hand wrote it, and then I, I actually mounted it on um, one of my shelves in the garage so that I could just quickly look at the checklist and then pack and then drive, you know, drive three hours for the weekend for the getaway. 
What if you did something like that, that people had how, to post? How about, um, uh, I'll give you a 10 day checklist of what you have to do now to plan for the vacation you're going to do later. Yeah, yeah. you see the difference you all? And yeah. like, oh, it starts to pop. It it's did, a thank tastier. you. Then all of a sudden he's not like the, you know, the 200 or 2000 other travel guys with that same bitch. It pops, good. Okay, now broadcast. As, as a guy who's a travel expert and a former radio guy, I've got some fun ideas for your viewers to learn how to book a vacation they want and deserve at the best value right now. Yeah, I like you throwing that radio uh, credential in there because then all of a sudden you got a bunch of radio people going, oh, cool, he's one of me, right? It draws them near you. All right, so I'm going to do something nice for you and everybody here. So if anybody needs any kind of vocal stuff, Michelle, you're nice to give. I'm going to give back. So if you want a 30 or 60 second anything, just send me the copy. I'll record it and send it to you. Oh, my gosh. There you go. I'm oh a my, nice guy. You, uh, yeah, put your email in here. Right, hey, for, for me on the phone, I don't see what you put on the chat. So what's your contact? Well, and then just, here's the other thing is, who, who's 951, what's your name? That's me, Linda Berry from oh, hi, Linda. Temecula, California. Yeah, yeah, I was on last week. Yeah, and I met you at the Ken Foster event with Voices of Courage. I'll say, it, I'll say it out loud. I'll say it out loud. Thank it's, you. It's Mitch Creighton, K-R-A-Y-T-O-N, and the email is mitch at creightontravel.com. Creighton. And then don't, Linda, also Hannah will send it to you, okay? She's going to send it in the, there's a, a few ways. Um, and then also, are we doing the, make sure that Linda has that in, in your, in your um, follow-up. Hannah's yeah. got you. What, what, I do, what I do ask is you give me the information you want me to say. Don't make me try to rewrite it. <laughs> I, will, I will record it for you and give it to you as an MP3 and you can and, use it with my pleasure. And by the way, you know, if you're watching this online years in the future, uh -oh. um, just, just, <laughs> just contact Mitch about travel. Thank <laughs> you. Have shelf life on this. Okay? There is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's for those people who are live here. Yes, so, exactly. Thank you. Let's just say, you know, and then like maybe an expiration date of January 2020 on that. Um, on like the it. right hand corner of your chat, everybody, there's three little dots and you can click, uh, click on that and you can save chat to your computer right now. Okay, good, Mitch. I think that that was excellent. I still think that you need for the broadcast um, I think that being a radio, uh, having radio experience is important, but I'd like for you to up level it on um, maybe interacting with callers. Oh, well, that would be for radio. I don't know they do much of that on TV these days, but I certainly could do that. Well, I think that radio people would really love that because it has people dream. Like, you know, they're stuck. Can you imagine? you're stuck in traffic, they're listening to the radio and, or you're at home and you're stuck at home. It just, it, I think that it's like a, it might actually be a, a radio travel day. With us hmm. today, we've got Mitch, who's gonna be taking calls about um, how to book the travel that you want after the pandemic now. Ooh, like, very cool idea. Right, and so then yeah. you've got, you're interacting with, and of course today it also looks like a Facebook Live, you know, it also, there's different types of interactive methods for people, but I right. think that that's, um, the, 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 what I hear is missing, Mitch, is why now? That's yeah. why all we did was we added a little level of, hey, save this and print it out and save it, or, hey, you got to book me now, because there's going to be a lot of competition in your, uh, your vertical of travel tips during the pandemic. You got to make it. Gotta well, I actually, I actually have a, a small niche of the travel business. I'm a small ship cruising expert, so I don't do the whole world as a general rule. Uh, when I have friends and colleagues, I'll book almost anything. But most of the time, 
I, I try to get people with going to travel for the purpose of seeing country, culture, food, all of those wonderful sensory things, as opposed to being in a large crowd on a floating hotel. So, um, you know, my, my niche is that because I've done both. I've traveled the world and I find a lot of folks in my generation don't want, uh, you know, surfing and rock climbing walls. They're more interested in culture and history and good food. Yeah. Here, this is really fascinating, okay? So I just want you to think about this. So my mother is 84. She's living with me during the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So lately she's been, um, and she's addicted to her phone, you all. It is like, I cannot get my mother off this phone. It's like if you have a teenager in the house, and you're like, get off the phone, right? She's always on the phone. like, And then she keeps she keeps accepting what YouTube is feeding her, okay? It's, what, it's terrible, right? I know. She, and, but anyway, so lately she's on uh, a lot of travel YouTube stuff. So she's traveling from her couch, Virtual. right? Yep. And then mm -hmm. she's off. She's like, you know, yesterday she's, Michelle, do you know in Croatia, they do blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, is that right? Croatia, right? So she's having the time of her life watching these things. I think that what you just said gives another flavor beyond what we've already talked about, which is um, insights into these other cultures. And there's tons always just like, you know, when I lived in Chicago, there was always like taste of Chicago. And then you, you go to the different booths and then taste the different cultures. People love that. You could do that virtually with any type of seasonal holiday around a culture. Yeah. And then take them. And then the, the press would actually book that based on the seasonal news of that oh culture. that's timely sure so, ah you should yeah. be in the pr business that's I great really right <laughs> oh my gosh thank you for saying that <laughs> yeah michelle, isn't she good she's good thank you thank you michelle you this is this is rosalind so hey, what rosalind. i'm hearing what i'm hearing you saying and it's like duh i i knew it but you're saying it in such a clear articulate way today is that we're all pitching too generically. We're not identifying the specific market that we're targeting, the specific medium we're targeting, and we're not giving them a reason to identify us as the person to talk to. We, we all sound too much like other people in our industry and in our fields, and we're losing attention. They're, they're just overlooking us, and you are honing in on very specific ways of standing apart and being very timely, and it's just, hit me over the head very strongly listening this time around. Yeah, this, yeah, so there's two pieces to that. Yes, you are correct and you're hearing that because I'm actually interacting with Mitch and that's what I hear from Mitch. And I want everybody to also hear this. Sometimes the generic is the best pitch. Mm. So for example, when we're talking about perfect pitch formulas, and that's the other thing that we wanted to talk about, and that's the, the, what we're talking about in this part of the um, challenge. So um, let's talk about the word stress. If you, the press is always covering tips on how to relieve stress. So they're actually looking for generic topics. But inside the area of stress relief, what are you saying that's fresh that they've never heard before? So just a little spin on what they already want. Now, how do you do that? You know, here's a tip that I don't share very often. Um, do you know that libraries give away periodicals online for free? Do you know that? Uh, some of you do, some of you don't. So we're all, you know, it's a pandemic. We don't necessarily want to go to the library and thumb through a bunch of periodicals, nor do we have the inclination to go to the store and buy a bunch of periodicals. And I pre probably aren't the type of person to have a ton of subscriptions on a bunch of magazines either. So go to your local library and just browse and don't browse the current magazines only. Go back a few years and then pitch them what they covered three years ago, two years ago. Ah, oh, right, Clements? Yeah. <laughs> Clemens goes, ah, oh, right? Yeah, because they're going to cover that. Just don't call it the same headline. 
I right? just see what they covered two years ago, three years ago. And they're like, oh, this time of year, they're covering this, you know, like your big magazines, like, you know, your ladies home journal and your uh, Southern living and your Marie Claire and those, right. See, that's the best type of research. And they're always going to take the same type of stuff. Um, and of course, I love the current magazines. Like I, I've been getting into, um, like as a self care for myself, I realized that I actually missed having some girly magazines. Like I, I was like really taken with Oxygen and O Magazine. I was like, I want to buy myself a subscription just as like a fun thing for me, you know? Um, awesome. So people have lots of different ideas and we got into the different type of targets. So on, let's talk about the pitch formulas because we actually have pitch formulas in here. And let me just give you an easy pitch formula right now. So you could get lots of them in the book um, around page 100, okay? And you can just follow the formulas. But here's the easiest one. I, I promise in my uh, blog that I would tell you how, uh, and then Diane's here. Diane, say, tell everybody who you are, Diane Haugen, because I'm going to talk about your pitch in just a second. My pitch? <laughs> um, I've, uh, my husband's uh, uh, obstetrician who's delivered 6,000 babies with no maternal deaths. And we, I worked with him to write a book 30 years ago, and we've just done a video that we're trying to promote not having much success at it, but it's getting, you know, we have a video to promote and neither one of us are very good at figuring out what is going to grab people's attention. So it, uh, when we were talking the last time the two, Alan and you and I talked, we got to talking about rural medicine. And so now we've got rural medicine. He practices in Elgin, North Dakota, and he's very aware of the problems with rural medicine. And so it's like a second topic that we're suddenly thinking about. Mm -hmm. and, so are you curious what happened this week? Well, I didn't hear much. Oh. Maybe you heard, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's curious, right? Wonder what happened. So I promised everybody um, that I would, um, t I would, I would, so in the blog, you may not have seen the blog, Diane, um, no. I actually put, so if you go to, um, this is particular one, city mouth versus country mouth, there's the particular blog entry that I did to promote today's call. Okay. And you'll see, literally, I just created it. I heard them talking. Yeah, it was just amazing. I mean, it was just like, you got the idea and we were just, it, you were flying with it and it was amazing to watch. Thank you, Diane. Let's talk about what this formula is. It's super easy. You all can do it. So what I talk about in this blog entry is we say geo target. So not only like, okay, is it print or broadcast, but we want to make it geographically specific. So here in the subject line, I made sure that they knew it was COVID, right? So it gives them kind of a keyword. Hey, this is about COVID and rural hospitals. Then we've got something in North Dakota, Dr. Alan Lindemann, and he's going to give you tips on time, travel, risk. Then I literally just say, do you need? Everybody repeat after me. Do you need? Do you need? Yes. Yeah. I recommend that you not only use it with press, but you also use it with your significant other. Or the alternative, what do you need? Because a lot of times we're talking at each other and like all we really need to say is, I'm sorry, what do you need right now, honey? Right? Now, and talking about Drew again, it comes from nonviolent communication theory, this uh, theory from um, Marshall Rosenberg. It's really an amazing body of work where it's not that our communication is based on feelings and needs. I highly recommend you check it out. But, uh, you know, in my most rageful moments with my business partner, when he stops and he goes, Michelle, 
what do you need? How do you need to be supported? It really diffuses everything and just has me feel loved. I highly recommend, I highly recommend it. It works with the press too. All they need is support, okay? If they feel supported by you, they will book you. So I said, do you need a doctor? A doctor about what? Like this isn't even, like, you know, this is one thing he's dealing with, but it's not everything he's dealing with. Oh, I did have his bio in here in the actual one, but um, Aeneas moved that out. So you can see here, I've got the whole press kit and this is him and this is his bio. In the actual pitch, I had the bio, okay? So then I just, but we're just getting to the nitty gritty here. And these are the th three things he's gonna talk about. So I actually asked Alan, what are you gonna talk about? And he said, these th he just started yapping and I just said, these are the three things. And I said, hey, let's do a quick video. So we literally did a video. Let me see if I can't. International publicist, Michelle. Let's see, I gotta optimize just so that you all can hear that before I share it, hold on. Here Senate Nicholson. Oh, and by the way, I did not think I was gonna be on camera, so I'm super casual. It's okay, they don't, the press doesn't I'm care actually about in me. a conversation with my client, Dr. Alan Lakota, that, you, that I can, and have talking basically we're, dr ellen lindeman is also oh my god she's so long-winded known as rural doc Alex, okay. about um the time risk that it is to patient setting making them flexible um, where i'm like i just oh, want to put Lord. you on camera so tell me a little bit okay somebody needs sound biting <laughs> I'm 30 seconds in and then we get to him. It's fine. I was about now. what's happening right now in North Dakota with regard to one call. And could you just recreate uh, for my press friends what you were saying to me about one call? Well, one call is supposed to be a call where we obviously call one time. Uh, today, I've spent at least two hours on one call. So it hasn't saved me any time. I've had to call three hospitals to try to get my patients sent out and it's each time I go to a different phone, I like I call three hospitals. So each time I get to talk to three different patient people and it's 20, 25 minutes each time. So it's yeah, that's, time. And it's also like not only time for you as a doctor, but also time for the patient that they're ailing and needing care. And then talk to, then recreate also the travel. So right now there's not enough beds where you are in Elgin and you have to get your patients to Bismarck or Fargo, but you were explaining the travel, what you're dealing with. And I just find this shocking. Well, we of course live where there isn't a recognized airport. Our airport is grass and most uh, airplane airline pilots don't want to land on grass so we have to go our nearest town that has an airport is 30 miles but it's 30 miles to the west so we have to drive away from the hospital to get to an airport that's got a concrete um, runway and then we they get to drive 120 miles back east again and that's what the the problem that we're having is the helicopter because they can't go 260 miles, which is where we would need to go to our next closest hospital. So there's not enough beds because of COVID, because of the outbreak in the rural areas, and that's now impacting access to um, more robust healthcare uh, services and whatnot. And then what is the risk actually to the patients that you're serving? Well, it's tremendous, you know. So then he goes on to talk about the, and it's literally less than three minutes. You can look at, I'll, here, I'll share this. Um, you can look at it later. Uh, it's very casual. It's not polished. Example, and um, we're now in chats with Tanya Boyer, who is the uh, producer at NBC Nightly News. So this, so Tanya received the pitch, okay? Not a doctor, but I put one on TV. And she wrote, uh, let me see the specific one. Michelle, thanks for sending. I will keep Dr. Lindemann in mind if we do any, do any rural health stories. We are very interested in hospitalization stories right now. So his insights into that are very helpful. And as a fellow North Dakotan myself, I always love to get the rural aspect in some, and some Midwest representation. And all I said was, 
Awesome. Just let me know when you want to speak with him. We're here. So then the job becomes with Tanya is I like to follow up three more times and then call it complete. This is an invitation to from Tanya to us to stay in communication. So Diane, NBC Nightly News. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> right? <laughs> I do. I, oh, you, you, you muted just, yourself. What? Um, there was one thing I wanted to, to tell you. We have, I told you there were 13 patients in the hospital, and this is a hospital that has three acute beds. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is 103 years old with COVID, and he's getting better. So we're very fortunate in that we've got a uh, very good uh, physician that is also here who is managing the COVID patients, and she's put together what she calls a cocktail that she gives them. Wow. Well, so, <laughs> so those are kinds of things that we could actually, um, you know, tell the press too. But I think that the, the bottom line is, is that they just need to know his expertise. They need to know about him. Like I said at the beginning, okay. it's not always who you know, it's sometimes who knows about you. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to continue. Diane has uh, more PR support with Wasabi Publicity. So if you need that, just email Hannah, Hannah at wasabipublicity.com. She'll help you out. We've got a variety of packages if you guys need support of any kind, um, whether it's a do-it-yourselfer or if you want a full robust support, that kind of thing. We, I'm, uh, I, I am wanting to point out about that subject line. Did you see how we tagged it, right, with the subject, the, the geographic area. So if you're doing a local pitch, you must hit them over the head that you're doing, you're local. Otherwise it's gonna, they get hundreds and hundreds of these types of communications, okay? So that is um, all I promised that I would cover for today. Next week, we're gonna actually talk about the delivery of, once you get the interview, how to actually have the interview and when. So inside, if you're looking for the registration early, I know that when it goes up on the Wasabi Publicity YouTube page, Hannah normally puts a registration link. Um, do we have the registration link already, Hannah? Okay, she's gonna put it in the, in the chat. Don't forget to save the chat, there you go. You can reserve for next Friday. It's gonna be our last uh, call for October. Then we'll be doing another three-part series again in November and you'll be doing another new challenge and hopefully you switch it up. Um, somebody asked me for the nonviolent communication book. Um, this is Marshall Rosenberg's body of work, nonviolent communication. It's really a beautiful body of work and there's just tons of people around the world who do that work. It's a, a completely different way of communicating. Um, I would recommend that with your, your life, like people in your life. It's not specific to press, although there are elements that work in your business life too with nonviolent communication. So uh, any burning question before we adjourn for the day? Michelle. Marjorie? Okay, Marjorie and then Katie. You gave me homework last week to do some paid advertising. Oh my gosh. Forgot. I did forget. <laughs> I did. Please report on it. Well, it's it's not what I was hoping. I did a one week, uh, just a one week Facebook ad for my book. And um, the good news was that over 1400 people saw the ad. That's and good. And about 40% um, clicked through. Zero that I can tell made a purchase. Okay, well then that, well, that tells us, Marjorie, is that, okay, so first of all, like you see a bunch of marketers on the phone going, you know, cause we only like, you know, one to 10% is usually like, you know, if you're getting 10%, 15%, 25%, people are jumping for joy. So the fact that you got 40%, something's working. So the, where you need to, uh, it's in the call to action. You're fine at closing. Right. The closing is what's weak. So inside a sales process, focus on the, the closing. For some reason, they're not, uh, purchasing. What I also realized was I've only got the paperback book, which is $20. And I now, right now, while before the call, have been looking closer at what's involved to put together an ebook. 
there's a couple more steps I have to take and I'll be able to offer something. And I think for the topic, an ebook may actually have a lot more draw and I've gone ahead and done the work now to figure that out. Oh, we would love to hear next. Thank you for reminding me because I did give you homework and I forgot about that. So thank you. And we want to continue to hear what evolves. Well, it um, occurred to me that Amazon ads might actually be more appropriate once I get the ebook installed. Nice. Explore okay. that. And I think that it's going to really pay off for you. I do. Okay. Thank okay. you. And Katie, what would you like to say before we adjourn? Um, just really quickly, I wanted to find out. So what you just showed us um, with, and I'm sorry, I don't remember um, the doctor's name. Dr. Alan Lindeman. Dr. Alan Lindeman. Um, so you just basically interviewed him over Zoom, recorded it, put it on your YouTube channel. And then did you do any promotion of it other than putting it on your YouTube channel? Yes, I actually sent it to um, about um, 2,000 uh, press friends of mine. Okay, and so you just put the link in an email? Yeah, in that, in my blog entry, you see right. the actual email. So your pitch, yeah. yep, perfect, perfect. That's all I needed. Yeah, Wonderful. I recommend that you do it, Katie, with your soccer piece. Absolutely, yeah, yes. and, and that's, um, I have something that I can add to the conversation next week in regard to when you are prepared, what a difference it makes with the press. It's unbelievable how mm -hmm. they will love you, so. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Come back next week and share yeah, that, will you? I will. And remind me if I forget, like Marjorie, I am 51 and my memory is not like it used to be. <laughs> I have to take Prevagen. <laughs> I'm two years older than you, so I'm right okay, there with awesome. you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everybody. Is that it? Did I get everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. Until Thank next you. Friday, have Thank a good day. Thank you. Thank you.